Hi, I'm Connor and welcome to ADO. Line is a popular local explainable AI method. It can be used to understand the individual predictions made by a black box model. In last week's video, we discussed the theory and limitations of this method. In this video, we will be applying the method using Python. We will see that although Line is a local method, we can still aggregate the Line weights to get global interpretations of a model. We do this using feature trends, absolute mean weights, and a bee swarm plot. So let's jump to the notebook. You can find a link to this code in the description. We start with the imports for this project. As we are working with tabular data, we use the lime tabular explainer function. We'll be applying the method to the abalone data set. Abalone are a shellfish delicacy. We want to predict the number of rings in their shell using features like shell weight and shuck weight, which is the weight of the meat. We load our data set. We select our target variable and do some feature engineering. Firstly, we exclude diameter and hull weight from the feature list. This is because we saw that it had a correlation of one with some of the other features. And lastly, we just turn the sex feature into one hot encodings. We use these features to train a random forest regressor to predict the number of rings. In this case, we have used a random forest, but keep in mind that Lime is a model agnostic method. This means it can theoretically be used with any model. To create local explanations, we start by creating a Lime explainer. We pass in our X feature matrix, feature names, target variable. We let the package know that we have a regression model. And finally, we set the random state so that we get the same results for each new run. We then use the explainer to create an explainer object for our first prediction. Finally, we display the explainer object. By setting show table equals true, we include the table that contains the feature values for this instance. The output gives us a lot of information about the first prediction. We can see that the predicted value was 12.98 rings. The table on the right gives the feature values. The chart in the middle tells us how each feature has contributed to the prediction. For example, this abalone shell weight has decreased the number of predicted rings. The value, negative 1.2, is the lime weight for this feature. We haven't set parameters for the choices we discussed in the theory video, so to get this output, the package will have used the default choices. For example, it would discretize features using their quantiles, this means each feature will be transformed into a categorical feature with four groups and use 0.75 times the square root of the number of features as the kernel width used to weight the permuted samples. In our case, we have eight features. It will generate 5,000 samples. For the surrogate model, it will use ridge regression, which is a type of linear regression. So if we go back to the output, these lime weights of the coefficients of the linear model trained on permutations of this instance. Or more specifically, the coefficients for the relevant quantile group the feature value falls into. Unlike SHAP, the sum of the weights and the mean prediction will not equal the prediction for the given instance. You can confirm this using this code. In other words, we cannot use these weights to understand how much the feature has changed the prediction. We only know the direction and the importance. Local explanations are great when you want to understand how individual predictions are made. However, looking at a single prediction won't tell us how the model works in general. To do this, we can use different aggregations of local explanations. That is, we will combine the lime weights of many predictions using different charts. To start, we need to get the lime weights from our explainer objects. 
To do this, we create the return weights function. This function accepts an explainer object, exp. From this, it will return a list of lime weights. These will be ordered in the same order as the X feature matrix. To use this function, we will iterate over the first 100 rows in our X feature matrix. For each iteration, we will create an explainer object. We get the weights and append these to a list of weights. Lastly, we create a data frame, lime weights, using the list of weights. The lime weights have shape 100 by 8. For each prediction, there is a lime weight for each of the 8 features. We can now use this data set to create global aggregations of the lime weights. The first aggregation can help us understand which of the features are most important. We start by taking the absolute mean of, of the weights. We then create a data frame with two columns, with the feature name and the absolute mean. We order this data frame from largest to smallest mean weight. Finally, we plot a bar plot using this data frame. Features with either high positive or negative lime weights have a large impact on a prediction. So features with a large absolute mean weight have in general made large contributions to the predictions. Notice how shell weight and shuck weight have larger mean weights in comparison to the other features. This tells us that these features are the most important when it comes to predicting the number of rings. We can also look at the trend for one model feature, shell weight. To create this chart, we first get the lime weights for the shell weight feature. We then compare these to the feature values for the corresponding lime weights. We then create a scatter plot of feature values versus feature weight. We can see that as shell weight increases, the lime weight increases. A higher lime weight indicates that for a specific prediction, the feature value has increased the predicted number of rings. So this chart tells us that as the weight of the abalone shell increases, the number of rings in its shell tends to increase. This makes sense as we would expect older abalone to be larger or heavier. Our final aggregation is a bee swarm plot created using this code. To give an overview, we iterate over all of the features. For each feature, we get the weights and the values. Using these, we create a scatter plot. The trick is to set the Y value for each of the points to the same value. This is how we get each of the scatter plots in a straight line. This is a plot of all the lime weights. The values are grouped by the features on the Y axis. For each group, the color of the points is determined by the value of the same feature. That is, higher feature values are redder. The features are ordered by the mean lime weights. So this plot combines information from both the absolute mean and trend plot. If you're familiar with the SHA package, you will recognize the bee swarm plot. It is one of the built-in visualizations that the package provides. The visualization above is nowhere near as pleasing as the one SHAP creates. If you're interested in learning about SHAP, then check out this playlist or see this video for a tutorial on a different model agnostic method, ALEs. You can also get free access to my explainable AI course by signing up to a newsletter in the description. I have covered the basics of the field and six different model agnostic methods.